Shirley MacLaine in Irma La Douce, who allowed us a glimpse of the Late Late Show in Paris. Why does the Academy particularly seem to discredit comedy and not think it's either very hard or worthy of uh, the award of excellence? Well, they don't always. I mean, The Apartment won the Academy Award. Right. Uh, Terms of Endearment won. But it's rare as opposed to, maybe there's not many great comedies, I guess. I if it's a social comedy with drama that's authentically substantiated, that has a better chance than a plain drama. Mm -hmm. But if it's just a, or if it's a Doc Simon comedy, I think you're right. When we think of Shirley MacLaine, we mostly think of this. Give my daughter the shot! Not only this specific scene, but also what it represents. Thank you very much. A skilled performer, both in dramatic moments, but also in subtle and broad comedy. Go ahead, Malin, slop her. Are you crazy? Hit her. Are you high, Clary? But Shirley MacLaine was also this. A skilled and professional dancer who started her career in various Broadway ensembles. So when Hollywood decided to make a movie version of the popular, but also controversial musical hit Irma La Douce, the casting of Shirley MacLaine in the titular role is a logical decision. Looking at Elizabeth Seale, who originated a part in the West End and won a Tony on Broadway, Shirley MacLaine appears to be the only A-lister at the time who possessed the same kind of brass personality, was willing to tackle this kind of material, and would also be able to perform various dance routines. If you have seen Irma La Douce already, you might now think, wait, it's based on a musical? Well, yes. Even if there's no way to tell this, because during pre-production, Director Billy Wilder made the decision to turn Irma La Douce into a straightforward romantic comedy without any musical numbers. If you don't count this. Wilder summed it up as, the more I went into that story, the better I thought it was. And for me, the numbers got in the way. So first one of them went. Then another one went. And one day, I made the decision and we threw the whole score out and made it a straight picture. Of course, the truth might also be that Billy Wilder simply had some doubts about his ability to tackle this distinct genre and preferred to stay closer to a style and sentiment he was more familiar with. I, I, never, I never made a musical in my life. I, I, I never should. It's not, my, it's not my bag. I didn't like the music, so I just left it out. But uh, there, were, there were no good songs. I, I, I used a couple of songs, uh, but they had nothing to do with Ramona Duce. When it came to casting, Billy Wilder was set on Jack Lemmon for the part of Nesta right from the start. For the supporting role of the bartender Moustache, Wilder was keen on casting Charles Lawton, with whom he had already worked on Witness for the Prosecution. Lawton himself was also eager to play the role, but he would die from cancer before shooting began. And for Irma herself, Death apparently also played a role in the final casting decision, as the part was apparently originally intended for Marilyn Monroe. It's an idea that would have made a lot of sense. She was a master in this kind of romantic comedy, she could sing, and she had already worked with Wilder and Lemon previously on Some Like It Hot. But of course, reports on how much Lemon and Wilder enjoyed working with her vary to a large degree. And even if she did not truly resemble the Irma of the stage, this would not be important as Wilder planned to make the character of Irma less brass and instead more human, straightforward and romantic. So definitely suitable for Marilyn Monroe. But of course her death in 1962, a couple of months prior to Charles Lawton's passing, ended every speculation about her casting. There are no specific details on how Shirley MacLaine ended up in the role of Irma, but it seems that Besides Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor and Brigitte Bardot, she was one of the main contenders for Billy Wilder right from the start. As already mentioned, she possesses a personality that resembled the original Irma, but could also tackle the more human sides of her character. And of course, like Marilyn Monroe, she had also already teamed up with Wilder and Jack Lemmon before. 
one of my mentors early on in my, in my work in Hollywood was Billy Wilder. Billy Wilder taught me the science of comedy and the science of the mixture of comedy and drama. Like Billy Wilder, Shirley MacLaine was keen on giving a less broad and more human personality to her character, saying, Irma is still a woman of the streets, but it is now a love story, and I am playing it straight, more humanly. Sure, she's all used up physically, but it's the first time she's touched emotionally by love. In preparation for the part, Shirley also spent four days talking to, quote, Parisian working girls, meeting them in bars and on the streets of Paris. 500 francs! What'd you have to do for it? Nothing! Oh, come on! Well, he, he taught me a new game. What kind of game? He beat me nine times in a row. That's more like it. He used to play with his wife, but now she won't do it anymore. She's got something going with the gardener. It's easy to imagine that, after the success of The Apartment, Sean McLean was very eager to work with Billy Wilder and Jack Lemmon again. And considering that out of the artistic trio, it was only Shirley who received Oscar attention and that the entire movie is named after her character, Irma LaDuce can be expected to be some kind of love letter to Shirley MacLaine as a director's muse and a beloved co-star. A movie built around her and allowing her to steal the show. A real showcase in every way. But it takes only a couple of minutes to realize, no, it's not. I mean, Irma LaDuce does present one of the most intense love affairs between an actor and a director, only it's Jack Lemmon who is the muse here and not Shirley MacLaine. You will be hard pressed to find a movie that more obviously shows how a director worships a single performer and just lets him do whatever he wants. For as long as he wants. If you're wondering why Irma LaDuce has a runtime of two and a half hours, even though all musical numbers were cut, well, we spent what feels like an eternity of Jack just taking his clothes off, Jack trying not to fall asleep, Jack simply walking around, or Jack standing in line. Shirley MacLaine does get a few minutes at the beginning of the movie when she is the true center of attention, but the moment Jack Lemmon's Nesta appears, Irma LaDuce becomes only about him. Shirley MacLaine herself was very aware of this too, but also understanding in some parts. She too had great respect for Jack Lemmon's talents, saying, his genius was so riveting that I would often come in on my days off, or stay late at night, just to watch him cast his comic spell before the camera. But she then added, I wish Billy would pay as much attention to my talents as he did to Jack's. Let those other girls work for you and see how well you do. You think you're numero uno, I'm numero uno. Maybe sensing that in a war of mugging for the camera, she would not have a chance against Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine instead played her part on a more human level, neither emphasizing the comedy in her role nor overplaying any dramatic moments. Instead, her Irma seems to have seen it all, not complaining about her life, but not being too enthusiastic either. It's an approach that had already worked beautifully and successfully three years earlier in The Apartment. However, Irma LaDuce is not The Apartment. The humor comes more obvious, the drama is shallow and the farce often cheap. Because of this, her straightforward approach might work to bring some actual human emotions into the story, but at the same time, it feels out of place in the surrounding. Her performance never feels enough for the specific style of Irma Ladus. Not charming enough, not funny enough, not dramatic enough, not believable enough. Shell McLean therefore often risks seeming miscast, simply because her acting appears too misplaced among all the craziness around her. You've changed somehow. Have I? Wow! That patch, shouldn't it be on the other eye? Oh! <laughs> Indeed! Ah, well, no wonder it was so foggy! <laughs> I've been practicing. I'll be much better tonight. Oh, let's get at it! Shirley. Shirley's out-of-place, matter-of-fact approach is most visible in the beginning of the movie. Telling different stories about her apparently tragic life to get more money from her clients, she neither emphasizes the comedy to make these moments funny for the audience, nor does she make them believable in the context of the scene. Instead, her characterization of Irma feels almost bored, uninspired and mostly joyless. As if Shirley MacLaine would rather be anywhere else than on this set, playing this role, saying these lines. You see, I was brought up in an orphanage near Cherbourg. It was destroyed on D-Day. I've been sending money every week to help rebuild it. I've already paid for a whole wing. Uh, 
That's all I have on me, ma'am. Actually, it was bombed by the 8th Air Force. Well, not that I blame you Americans. But if you could see those poor little orphans sleeping on the floor, the rain coming in, there are no beds yet and no roof. It's therefore important to note that Shirley MacLaine was in fact unhappy with the project. Because when she signed on for Irma Ladoos, she was thinking that she would do a musical. And was strongly disappointed when Wilder told her that the music would be cut. Not only because she was eager to return to the genre, but also because she felt that the plot of Irma worked better in the make-believe world of song and dance. The music took it into the realm of fantasy, and that's what made it work for me. But without the music, I had a problem. I felt the movie was slightly crude, clumsy and hard to believe. What jackpot? I found him! Mm. And he's got a castle. And he comes here twice a week. Ooh, right, calm down. And he's English, and he's a lord, and I'm going to see him again on Thursday. And he's filthy rich. You know how much he gave me? How would I know? Come on, make a guess. 500 francs! It's a curious situation in which Shirley MacLaine seems visibly unhappy with her work, while at the same time taking the project more seriously than anyone else, trying to give at least some credibility by toning everything down. And to her benefit, being so out of sync with the broader comedy around her often makes you breathe with relief in various scenes, because she's the only one in the cast that truly feels like a human being, and you are actually thankful whenever the movie gives some of its attention to her instead of Jack Lemmon. Shirley herself was very right when she later said, Billy was so enamored of Jack that he pressed him to do take after take just to see what would happen. The later takes were forced and often those were the ones that Billy printed. I on the other hand only had to do it 3 or 4 times because frankly I don't think Billy thought I was capable of much more, but at least I stayed fresh. Now don't open your eyes yet, I want you to see it against the light. Alright, you can look now. Mister? Today, maybe next week. Alright. If that's the way you feel about it. But Shirley's approach to the role and the movie is a double edged sword as it pushes Irma even more into the background as the story goes on. Shirley's characterization might make Irma simple and understanding of the world around her, building a nice contrast between Irma as a woman who has seen it all and Nesta who has seen nothing yet. But nothing of the comedic tonality of the movie finds any way into her work. She did not need to overdo her comedy like Jack Lemmon, but she still could have used more spark and aliveness in her acting, to stop her performance from becoming strangely artificial and meaningless, making Irma the least interesting aspect of the movie. By underplaying every scene, either dramatic or comedic, Shirley often feels less subtle or real than just lazy making it even harder for Irma to make any kind of impact in a movie that is never interested in her in the first place. What do you mean a job? Well, I'm sure I can find something around the market, uh, unloading trucks, or cleaning the stalls, or... <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> Did I say something wrong? You're trying to make me feel cheap. Cheap. How would it look if I let you go to work? Do you want the other girls to think I can't support my man? However, despite mine and Shirley's own objections, reviewers did enjoy her performance. She received positive notes such as, even if the part was not tailor-made for her, she still fit right to it. She was called the best comedic actress in the business and a performer of such attractiveness that she can cut through the tired plot to get the audience's attention. Nevertheless, other critics commented that she was trapped by the flatness of the character. Now, I'm the president here. Uh -oh. Well, that's enough. Let's shake hands and make up. Hmm? Oh. Right. Yeah! Now, the, girls... the movie itself received mixed reviews as well. 
Some called it one of the most outrageously hilarious productions of the season, but many reviewers were strongly disappointed that the musical numbers of the Broadway production had been cut and called it shallow, too long or unfunny. And of course many commented on the controversial elements of the plot, complaining that Shirley was showing too much skin, that the movie openly portrayed her work as a prostitute and generally referred to it as strictly adult fare. Hollywood producer Hal Wallace went even further and called the movie pornographic, distasteful, obscene, offensive and degrading and without a doubt the filthiest thing I have ever seen on the screen. You will be gentle, won't you? But as is often the case, comments and reviews like this only increased the interest of the audience and Irma Ledoux became one of the five biggest money makers of the year and Billy Wilder's biggest commercial success by far and he later said, I personally earned more out of that picture than any other picture I ever made. The financial success was a compensation for the fact that he was never truly happy about the movie. Initially he wanted to land somewhere between Tennessee Williams and Walt Disney but he never felt he found the right tone and later said, if I had my way, I'd reshoot 95% of that thing. It did not quite uh, come off. It is not, it is not, I, when, I, when I think of it or dream of it, there is no smile on my face. And Shirley also remained skeptical of the whole experience and could not even find any consolation in her Oscar nomination. I didn't understand why I got nominated and would have been really nonplussed had I won. Of course Shirley was never a serious contender for the win in 1963, showing how hard it is to predict the Oscar journey for a performer. After her snub for the apartment, there might have been a lot of goodwill among Academy members to make it up for her, similar to Betty Davis winning for Dangerous or Joan Fontaine for Suspicion. However, when Shirley did more Oscar friendly and overall critically acclaimed work in The Children's Hour or Two for the Seesaw, the Oscars did not find any room for her in the strong Best Actress lineups of 61 and 62. In 1963, she benefited from a smaller group of contestants in this category, but her performance could not gain any real traction compared to the dramatic work of her co nominees. And with this not, her snub for the apartment seemed to have been repaid and all goodwill gone. Yes, we didn't give you the Oscar for The Apartment, but we nominated you for Irma Ladoos. So we're good. And before you know it, Shirley needed to add 20 more years of show business to her resume before the Oscar was finally hers. Which might have been frustrating at the time, but after all, it's better to win your award for a truly iconic and beloved piece of work than for a performance you don't even care for yourself. So in this way, everything worked out perfectly for Shirley in the end. The streets are cold and hard. The shutters locked and barred. Irma, what do alone? What's the use of trying? And with this, let's move on to this year's winner.